Hi, I'm Tony Fold. This video shows how I go about aligning a tailstock. Most tailstocks are comprised of two pieces. This one, there's a dividing line here, so we've got everything above that, and then we've got everything below it. There's a keyway, a large keyway here, which guides that, keeps it in alignment in a lateral direction so that the center can be offset to one side to enable tapered turning. The fact that there is an adjustment means it can be out of adjustment. So if we want to turn something parallel between centers or do some drilling and reaming, we want the center to be accurately aligned with the axis of the tailstock. This particular one has a bolt on this side, a matching one on the other side, which bear against the buttress in the center. And by adjusting these, we have a fine adjustment of the amount of offset this way. If we have some method of checking the alignment, then built into here, we have a method of doing the alignment. In my previous video, I showed what this tailstock was like inside and explained the reasons that I put four clamping bolts on here because otherwise without those the only thing that held the two parts firmly together uh, was the cam lock which is really designed for holding the whole assembly onto the bed of the lathe rather than holding the two bits together. Before looking at what I'm terming my method of checking concentricity between the tailstock axis and the headstock axis. Let's consider the two most common ways that people use for checking the alignment. Well, this uh, setup shows uh, one of the uh, two common ways of uh, checking that you've got the tailstock uh, center aligned. I, I've got an aluminium bar. Uh, in, in here simply because it's what I had but you would normally use a precision ground very parallel bar with very accurately made centers in each end then you would mount it between centers have uh, some sort of test indicator mounted here which I've just set to zero and then you traverse it along the work and if there is any error on, on this one at the moment it's about two thou in that way it would need the tail stop adjusting to bring the center about two thou this way this will just check for alignment in the horizontal direction we still need to check for alignment in the vertical direction. Now we have no uh, adjustment for that, uh, but we still need to know if it's uh, accurately aligned or not. Okay, so I've now moved the uh, dial indicator to pick up off the top of the bar. If I traverse it now, any error will indicate a vertical error in the center of the tail stop and uh, by the look of it, it's round about uh, 8,000, uh, which uh, needs attending to. For that method to be accurate, regardless of how well the test bar had been made, requires that the center at this end be as true as possible. The quality centers are, are pretty good, and it would be more usual to remove the chuck and take it all put. One very quick way, if you don't uh, want to spend the time on that, that I find uh, gives good accuracy, is to chuck up a bar. It, it may not be dead accurate. But then if you turn a centre onto that, then it's going to be running true, as long as you don't remove it. Before. The other method of testing using a bar, in, which, in this case has to be a sacrificial bar so you don't want it uh, hardened is to put a tool in and take a light 
test cut over the length of the bar. Then you would mic up each end of the bar. Any difference will indicate a lack of alignment in the tailstock. The problem with this method is that it doesn't really separate out the errors in alignment between horizontal misalignment of the tailstock, which can be adjusted, and the vertical misalignment. Now, if you just want to turn something parallel or turn something tapered, regardless of any vertical misalignment, you can compensate by having an appropriate error in the um, horizontal alignment. Uh, that's all very well if you're turning between centers, but it's not much help if you want an accurate alignment for drilling or reaming. And the other disadvantage, of course, with this method is that you use up some of your bar stock e each time you want to do the alignment. It's not a method that I particularly like. Well, let's have a look at the method that I use. Firstly, I just had to make this fairly simple adapter for um, a, a dial gauge. That clamps in the chuck. Here I've just got an extension and a, a, a typical clamp for a dial gauge mounted on here. I uh, also use a fairly high quality dead center. By the way, for any of these uh, tower stock alignment uh, methods, it's preferable to use a good quality dead center rather than a typical live center like this one. Uh, this particular one has a certain length that's been ground parallel on here, which is useful but not essential. So I put that into the tail stock, the tail stock up and drop the dial gauge stylus onto that. Firstly, I'll zero the dial gauge with it on the far side. And then if I swing it round, it will show me any lateral error on the dial gauge which looks to be about 5 thou. I need to move the tail stock about 2.5 thou that way, half of what the error is. Now I can check the vertical, set the zero, and then I swing it down to the bottom, and that's showing about 12 thou low. Now that, I think, is because of wear on the base over the periods of use. Uh, that's taken place before um, before I got the machine. Uh, that's not the easiest thing to change in a satisfactory uh, method. The, the simplest would be to lift the top section a bit and put some shims at the front and the back, the same height to uh, shims. Not the most satisfactory solution, but it's a practical one. That's it for now. If you uh, if found this video interesting, please like and share it. And uh, please subscribe to my channel to get notice of any further videos.